Peter's a god. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. Miss Gina. And this is the Concept Crucible podcast. So Today we're talking about video games. Video games. We can't go a season without talking about video games. Well, no, because like we play a lot of video games. We do. Although, I feel kind of bad because uh, in reviewing the previous episodes... I realize I am playing a lot less now. Oh, and, someone's and so a fake nerd I'm, boy! I'm, I'm starting to fall off the wagon and lose my nerd cred. Um, it's not how nerd cred works, but sure. Yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> like, starting to lose my nerd cred. Why? Well, I've been listening to a lot of Chopin lately, <laughs> and uh, I found myself eating some refined cheeses. How does that make you less of a nerd? Well, I guess it doesn't. Wanna I started. Want to watch Ghostbusters? <laughs> I started really listening to new metal recently, guys. And I really think it's due for a comeback. <laughs> Get out! Listen, I've been listening. I've been listening to some R and B, and I really think it's the new metal. <laughs> Freaking love R and B. I don't care who knows. The new Metallica acoustic album. Mm. Lulu. Um, Icebreaker, because we all play lots of games. Then Gina, this was your this was your idea and your baby. <laughs> Okay. So, uh, what is it? Um, so, the last two video games that you played, uh, one is trying to kill you and one is trying to save you. How how done are you? Uh, go ahead. I guess I can start. Uh, so, the only way to make sense of this, I think, is... The, so, the last two games that I've played uh, pr- are pretty much Slither, or Slither.io, however you want to call it, and, and Guitar Smith. Rocksmith? Rocksmith. I always call it Guitar Smith because you play guitar. So I can't really see Rocksmith killing me. So the only way this makes sense to me is the Worms of Slither are trying to eat me and I am repelling them with the power of rock. Rocksmith kills you with carpal tunnel. I could see that. There's been a few times. Um, you can tell I play guitar wrong because like it'll start to hurt up here. Mm-hmm. Not the wrist, but up here. You can tell I'm, I'm bad at picking. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, uh, I would say that the I am running away from ever expanding worms as they consume more and more things, and I try to repel them with, with the power of rock ryth- rhythm section. I'm not really playing lead; I'm playing a lot of rhythm. So, but I'm I'm doing fairly well with the air uh, guitar is less exciting on that one. Yeah. For those of you listening, I've been playing air guitar. He's been helping me out. That's what that sounds like. So that's that's what's trying to kill Your me. Your E strings out of tune. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me let me fix that up. Second. That's much better. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Trolling our listeners is maybe my favorite thing to do on this podcast, <laughs> apart from Heckle Ryan. <laughs> uh, so, my last two games are Minecraft, shockingly, uh, and uh, StarCraft 2. Because I got back into StarCraft 2. And if you have watched any of the Minecraft videos, there's one that comes out tomorrow because it comes out every Tuesday and every Thursday here on the channel. Minecraft is trying to kill me. <laughs> Minecraft is trying to kill me. Every part of it. Every Minotaurus that chases me down. Every harpy and cockatrice, pit of lava and chunk that doesn't load and bullshit cactus. <laughs> is trying to kill me. Rich <laughs> is trying to kill me. <clears throat> you might think... Jim, Rich Rich can't be trying to kill you. He's too busy killing everything else that he can see, especially innocence. And he, besides, aren't you shooting with that crossbow all the time? And those are true. Those are facts. But he is still trying to kill me. Trust me, there's a scheme, and I am the target of it. And to save me, all I have is StarCraft II, which seems really cool because there's lots of armies, and the problem is that everybody's all wrapped up in their own bullshit, except for the Protoss. What what resources do you need to construct more mi- pylons in Minecraft? Uh, I obviously need more Vespine gas. Like 100% more Vespine gas than I have. Um, Possibly more overlords as well. But yeah, everybody in StarCraft is wrapped up in their own space bro bullshit. Except for the Protoss who are grown-ups. Um, and they're not going to save me because they got grown-up stuff to do. I am effed. Gina. Um, 
So the last two games that I played, uh, I just recently got into Tropico Five, uh, where nice. you are—it's uh, a, a sim city type builder where you're a dictator of a small island nation and uh, Elder Scrolls Online, which is uh, a very very epic fantasy type battle. So I picture the the anchors of Cold Harbor erupt in the sky over this peaceful little island nation and the giant anchors latch themselves into the ground and tons of undead and winged creatures come flying out attacking the city and knowing me I will fall because I haven't constructed enough uh, barracks and military um, so my sugar plantations are just going to uh, See, yeah. Just just go up into the ether. I had figured for my limited fake nerd boy uh, knowledge of Tropico that your your dictator she's just like sitting back and she's like the anchors drop into the ground and the undead hordes pour forth and you're just smoking a cigar and being like cool tourism. <laughs> it's it's one way tourism. That's my cigar noise. There's there's no uh, continued revenue. Job security just drops. Mm, yeah, I, guess. I, I don't. I don't have nearly enough hospitals built for that. Fair. So, yeah, and and really, everybody just wants to export fish. So, I, I don't know if Cold Harbor is just looking for a new trade route. That's possible. Yeah, I mean, you could work something I, I, out, probably. Uh, yeah, that's a thought. Okay. Yeah, maybe we'll, we'll we'll try to negotiate. Maybe first, we'll, we'll see how it goes. So, really, it's up in the air. Fair. Fair. All right. Um, so that leads us into what games we are playing. Uh, I am playing StarCraft 2. Mostly, uh, I've been playing a ton of Fallout 4 since it came out. Uh, as you've no doubt heard from various Minecraft videos when we get bored of talking about Minecraft and start talking about Fallout 4. But I... Oh my god, that game. It's just... It hits all my sweet spots. I mean, I get to make a character and gain levels... And get cool abilities. I can build my own guns and customize them to my heart's content. I can paint my own armor. And then I get to go and discover places in this huge wasteland, find people who live there, and perform 50 caliber dentistry on them <laughs> as I shoot them in the mouth, the mouthular region. The more I podcast with you, the more I realize you are just like a digital violent person. Oh my god, you have no you have no idea. You're like the kindest, nicest person in reality, but when you describe your video game exploits, you are brutally I, evil. I like I and I'm and I'm like playing the nice person in Fallout 4. I'm like, I'm helping, I'm helpful, I'm helping everybody out. You're helping you know? them with fifty cal. No, <laughs> listen, alright. Let me be perfect. Not lead in their diet. They yeah. just, Let me be one hundred percent perfectly clear about how I roll in Fallout. If you draw down on me, welcome to the last five seconds of your life. Like people, everyone in the world gets a chance to kill me once. once. Nobody gets out of that thing alive. <laughs> Synths, super mutants, raiders, everybody gets one shot, and then I get my shot. Except, of course, for the people I take out at 200 yards with my sniper rifle. <laughs> Those people get no shot. But they get a wonderful surprise! <laughs> it's like a party in your head. There's confetti. <laughs> I think that's called I'm not making this better, am I? No. It's shrapnel. It's pronounced shrapnel. Confetti! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're just a nice sociopath. Yeah, no, just... basically, in, in video games, I am... Yeah, I'm something else. Yeah. All right, what about you? Uh, so as I said, uh, really the, the two games I'm playing right now are uh, Slither and uh, Rocksmith. Rocksmith because, um, well I should, I should back it up. I was playing Saints Row 4. Uh, I, I got it as a Christmas present a couple Christmases ago and I had finally finished doing like two playthroughs of Borderlands 2, uh, a playthrough of the pre-sequel of uh, Arkham Asylum, Arkham City... 
Uh, and there's a few other games in between there, like the Lego games and whatnot. And then so I'm finally like, okay, I'm going to play this game. And I started to really enjoy it. But then I uh, I hit a period where uh, some of my responsibilities in real life started to pile up. And I realized that when I played the game, I wasn't getting... I, I wasn't allowing myself the unrestricted free time that I could... That I would allow myself to enjoy it guilt-free. Mm-hmm. So it, it suddenly became an economics problem. I knew that the time I was putting into the game was trading off with something else. And the accomplishments I was getting in the game was not something that I was valuing for the time I was putting into it. And so it's just like, I gotta, I gotta put this off to the side, but I want to do something. And I, and I had, I finally, you know, spent the hundred bucks to get Rocksmith and the cable and everything. And so I'm like, okay, if I'm going to play a game, it's going to be productive and I'm going to play and learn and practice guitar. And so I started playing it in earnest and downloaded a couple songs. So I've got a, uh, three Kill Switch Engage songs and whatnot. And I'm I'm like over seventy percent on these Kill Switch songs, and they're they're reasonably fast, you know. So it's it's kind of an accomplishment. I'm proud of myself for being able to fumble my way through enough of it to, to get like 80 percent on these songs. Um, I'm and, proud of you too, Ryan. You've like, ma- you've managed to make playing metal and video games. At the same time, sound productive and boring. <laughs> I just take the fun out of everything. Um, and then so I've recently encountered uh, Slither. And this is strangely enough because I ran into um, a video by um, Marky Plyer? Markiplier. Markiplier. Um, it, 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 with all the YouTube drama stuff, like his one video made it to my front page for some reason. And I clicked on it just out of interest, and he starts talking. I'm like, the first thing I thought was, God damn, he's got a really good voice. He's got a fantastic voice. And and, and then I saw, like, the pink hair, and because I watched the one video, all of his, like, his videos showed up in the recommended, and, like, the thumbnails and stuff, and he started playing Slither, and I started watching the Slither and getting a lot of enjoyment out of watching him. And so I'm like, okay, well... This is well. how those aliens nearly compromise the Enterprise. Yeah, and so <laughs> th- I, I decided to check out Slither, and, um, yeah, I have it on my tablet, and I play it in the web browser at work. At work, <laughs> I'm not supposed to be. Oh. And last weekend, I woke up Saturday morning, and I was kind of it was like ten o'clock, and I'm like, okay, well, let's just get a quick game of you know, it's like, it's really like a drug <laughs> drug seeking habit at this point. It's like, let's just get a quick game of Slither in, and I started playing, and suddenly it's like ten minutes, and twenty minutes, and thirty minutes, and suddenly thirty minutes, and my battery's running low, so I have to go out and plug my tablet in because I've been, and it was like forty five or fifty minutes later, and I actually breached. The first position on that on the server that I was playing on, I was number one on it. Slipped there for like probably three minutes or something like that. It flipped back and forth as other people would die and and get absorbed on other snakes and and then eventually I'm just like, okay, I gotta get doing something. So I started to get really reckless and I died. I'm like, okay, that's it, done, done. Oof, I gotta, I gotta like, I gotta like make something or do something real. But yeah, I I, I feel like, and I think you might, I think Gina, you might back me up on this. That the notion of like. Lamenting time wasted after spending a whole hour playing a video game. It's so cute. Right? It's adorable. <laughs> like, I can think of days that I lost in Skyrim where, like, yeah. I've been playing for five hours and I was like, you know what? I just need to write this whole day off. Yeah. I got I got quests to finish. Yep. There's been... This is how you get to where we are in life. <laughs> this is, this is a, a largely recent development. Um... Only within the last six months to a year, because I would invest a lot more time. Well, again, relatively speaking, I'd invest a lot of my time, but it's only recently that it's there's this kind of economics trade off in my mind that I'm investing, or it's an opportunity cost. You know? I, I think it's fair. Um, I've been finding lately, just because of other things going on in my life, and this is where this phase is. Uh, the games that I'm leaning towards and investing my time in are they're becoming co-ops or team play or something I can do. So I'm mm-hmm. still having that interaction with other people. And that's, that's where I want to do it. If, if I'm sitting there playing literally by myself in the room, nobody else around, I kind of feel like, well, I just lost a bit of time, but if I can even at least play side by side with somebody. So, uh, 
mentioned in the open, I've been playing Tropico 5, because that was the free game on the PlayStation Network uh, this month. Um, my partner, we've got a setup where we can both play in the same room, so my partner is sitting there playing also Tropico 5 at the same time. And so that's it's still time together, and that's mm. sort of where I'm leaning to a bit more. Mm. So um, with that, I've been I've been playing Tropico Five. Clearly, just weirdly obsessed. Um, I lost actually productivity today. Sort of clocked off work a little early. <laughs> just ended up going and playing it. Uh, we've been doing uh, Elder Scrolls Online, which is my first massively multiplayer online game. Um, I've never done that before, which has been a new experience. Uh, over Christmas, a number of our friends got PlayStation 4s, and we all sort of bought GTA 5 as well. So we've been playing that online, and again, t- the togetherness for it. I finally am sort of getting back to everybody else, and I've got um, uh, Dragon Age 3, my first playthrough. Uh, finally started that and going through it, and I have a whole bunch of friends that are so excited because now they can talk to me about it. It's like, <laughs> it's been so long, why haven't you played this yet? And there are reasons, uh, especially if we saw the headcanon episode, <laughs> there are reasons why I hadn't played it. They have yet. now, because I'm <laughs> not going to reverse the order of the episodes <laughs> like I do sometimes. <laughs> so Maybe it's in the far future. <laughs> uh, some of the other ones, I've gotten really invested in sort of the smaller games, um, indie games in a way that have come out. So I've been playing Unraveled. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is a game where you are a little yarn character and you're going through and you're... It's a small side-scroller platformer puzzler, nothing too involved, and you're basically collecting memories um, of this this wonderful lady and and you're going through it. So it's it's a story-driven game. Uh, We've been going through The Witness, which is all puzzle-based board sort of games where you have to draw draw lines and solve puzzles and doors and slowly piece together what's happened on on the island. And it's just the environmental puzzles that, that they've created with that is just absolutely the fascinating. The Witness reminds me of like a really, really colorful version of Myst. It is, yes, I would absolutely agree with that. It's it's kind of the graphics are almost basic in some areas. They're very primary colored. They're almost polygon in a way and yet there's so much detail to it. And yeah, you're going you're going around this island and seeing where all the pieces interact with each other, and it's it's a really interesting experience. Just sort of like what's going on, and it's that learning spirit experience for it. So, and the other game that you will find me playing every night right before bed on my phone, I will launch Heyday, um, and I will take care of my farm. Genie is a Heyday fiend. <laughs> I will take care of my farm, I will feed my animals, and I will deliver goods, and 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 that one boggles my mind about being a game and why I still play it, and I, I find it enjoyable and relaxed, but there's, there's no goals, there's no uh, quests per se, there's nothing that you, you know, build this, it's just you're continuing developing your farm and laying it out, it's just this odd... A very odd thing for me, and it's the sort of thing when we talk about what games are you playing, I never tell anybody that I'm playing Heyday, because it's somehow embarrassing uh, to do it, because it's, you know, sometimes classified as not a real game or something. It's like, what are you doing it? I, I don't know. I feed my animals and I pet my bunnies, and that's about all I do. I do that in Skyrim. <laughs> I do. I name my horses. Mm-hmm. And uh, I have a farm mod. Can make my own cheese. I, I haven't seen a dragon in Heyday yet. I'm hoping with the new update. Maybe it'll be the Macho Man Randy Savage. That would be amazing. It's kind of it's kind of funny in these um, podcasts when you re- make realizations on the fly. Uh, just picking up on, on the, like the first thing you had mentioned about playing with your partner in the same room. Um, I, reflecting on my game experience, the only time in the last I don't know two or three years where I played games that I felt. Um, I was able to to excuse myself to to play the games and not feel guilty about it. Was Sarah got really into uh, the Lego, um, mm-hmm. a little bit of Star Wars, but mostly like the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. She got super into those games and Harry Potter. Harry Potter was a really bad one. Like she was, she'd be calling me up like I can't get past this part, <laughs> and and she played through most of it on her own. But I, when I would join her for co op. 
Mm-hmm. It was the co-op mode yeah. that that I would play through, and I and I felt like it was perfectly fine to sit down and you know spend a couple hours. And so yeah, it's 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 interesting you bring that up. Man, Lego games are awesome. I I think I have almost all of them. Yeah, but I have played basically none of them because <laughs> they're like with mouse and keyboard, it's really awkward. I think there's a mm. video from like last year, like last April, two Aprils ago, maybe. Where I was playing Lego Batman, and it was just, I'm just like, it took me so long to figure out that I had a punch button. <laughs> <laughs> but with the controller, I'm, I am I can see how that would be it's really, a little more intuitive. it'd be super yeah. intuitive, it'd be really fun. Um, so those are what we are playing. What do we wish we were playing? I mean, well, now I wish I was playing Lego Indiana Jones again. That's, <laughs> Sorry. That's, well, it, actually, funny side story is just recently my partner, we have uh, movie night and we decided to watch all of the Indiana Jones movie in a oddly reverse chronological order. I don't know why we decided that. But How many Indiana Jones movies are there, Gina? The four. Okay, just yeah. checking. Yeah, we watch, yeah, we, some we people, watched all some of them. People, some people think I, there are I, less. No, I just wanted to We to watched check. the ones that are, de- that are called Indiana Jones mm-hmm. movies. Um, but I think I drove my partner crazy because I, the last thing I saw last time was, it was played through the Lego games. And through the whole time, now I was re-seeing the movies after playing the games and was amazed at how accurate they were. And my partner hasn't played the Lego games, and I think I drove him crazy. Basically, he's like, ooh, and then this part, in the Lego thing, you get to bounce off the thing and do the thing. You're spoiling the game. You're literally watching the movie of the game. We're not spoiling anything. And I just, it was, it was quite funny. I was just like, those games were so good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I'm sure I was playing XCOM 2. Yeah. I don't even have XCOM 2. Um, I have XCOM, Enemy Unknown, and Enemy Within. And they are awesome. But I am awful at XCOM. Like, either when I'm not being too conservative and, like, getting overwhelmed by aliens or... Um, like clinging too hard to my teammates or my my squad members, so they're not taking ri- the risks they need to to get the shots they need to. I'm being too risky because I'm impatient. And I'm sticking my neck out, then being sad when somebody gets blown <laughs> away. I think my last mission in XCOM, uh, I had all my team crouched by a door, and I thought I was so clever because I had to destroy the engine in that in, like there was in a far off room, so. I just had my heavy lean around with a rocket launcher and just blow it up. Didn't even have to go in there. Didn't have to fight anybody. Then the door down the hallway opens and a cyber disc comes out and kills three people. And I'm like, no. Including my only medic. Hans. Moment of silence for Hans. Thank you. But XCOM 2 looks, it looks like XCOM only better. Like in every way, in every stream I've seen of of XCOM Two, and I love watching XCOM Two streams. Is it's just probably because people who are like I'm playing on normal. I'm not even playing on like legendary or Iron Man or anything like that. I'm playing on normal and I'm sucking. Um, but like people who are playing on legendary and who are just kicking ass and taking names and you know naming their squad mates after ch- people in chat and like it's just. It's one of those things I find really enjoyable to, to watch done well, and I wish that I was playing it because it looks really fun, but I know that I get, like, three missions in and I stop having fun because I just get frustrated or, you know, nine of my people get blown away and I don't want to learn that lesson. I just want to <laughs> enjoy the game. We established that earlier, didn't we? You just run, gun, fight, Well, and that's, and that's the thing. Yeah, like, I mean, Fallout, I get to perform my own dentistry. I don't die in Fallout. I just... <laughs> There's nothing I can't defeat with a sufficient amount of, like, running backwards and shooting bullets. <laughs> you know? Death claws, whatever. I was the master of the second wind in uh, one of my playthroughs of Borderlands. Oh, mm. man, mm-hmm. do I love that second wind. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, I wish I was playing XCOM 2. In terms of games I wish I was playing, um, <clears throat> so I wish my computer was better that I could tap into Steam. Because all of my friends talk about you know, the amazing stuff they play on Steam. But that's a little bit of a cop-out answer. I would say the game that I really wish I could play, and this is, again, thanks to um, 
um, Markiplier. Yeah. Uh, is Link Mark. to Markiplier in the show notes. Because yeah. he, he clearly needs the traffic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Support him. <laughs> it, it, it would help. He's got, what, like... Three million yeah, it's, viewers. It's, he can he can he can use a few more. Um, I'm really enjoying his playthroughs of Mario Maker, the the little quest mm. things. Um, Mario Mario Maker, the nightmare game made for monster humans. Yeah, <laughs> I I kind of wish I was playing that. Um, oh. It just looks like a lot of fun to be playing through these insane um, pre-made levels you know, that have been laid out as his challenges. Every Mario Maker game I have ever seen. Like every level I have seen looks like literal hell. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for like, some reason, I really want to try it. At some point, you like you bump a question mark block, and Satan himself comes out <laughs> and is like, "Oh, you thought you should finish the level," and then you bounce off his head because you have to bounce off Satan's head in order to get past the spikes, and he's just like, "Where the fuck do you think you're going?" Damn it! Fireball. Like. <laughs> I cannot... I love that they put the restriction that you have to finish the level in order to post it. Yeah. But what it results in is these just like... I see these videos of what claim to be human beings. (laughs) Like, completing these levels that are made of spikes and doom. It... Boggles my mind. <laughs> like it's like watching a video of somebody who can juggle nineteen balls. I'm just like, you're better at this thing than I'm ever going to be in my entire life. And I really wish you were a robot, but I know that you're not. <laughs> I am that masochistic. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. I, I'm I, aware. I, I wouldn't mind putting myself through it. That's, I, that's I will I'm... find. I will find you access to Mario Maker. And some of those levels, and we'll do a whole video of just Huck and Jim. Huck and Jim, rage is that a thing? <laughs> no, I don't. I'm not going to rage at nothing. Um, I will laugh as you scream, scream into the abyss, scream into the abyss of the Mushroom Kingdom. <laughs> scream into the abyss of the Mushroom Kingdom is my Nietzschean metal band. <laughs> Works. Thank you. Uh, but we, you were talking about Markiplier, and I've been talking about XCOM streams. But yeah, we want to talk about streaming because I have been, I watch tons of game streams um, for games that, for example, don't involve shooting people in the mouth. I really enjoy games like Firewatch or um, even Stalker, actually, which was weird because Stalker is a game about shooting people in the mouth. But XCOM... Um, Dear Esther, there's rhythm games, stuff like that. I like watching those things, often while I I play games myself. But I don't like playing them. I like that they exist. Mm -hmm. I think they are good games. But they are not... They they do not tickle my fancy. They're not gym games. No, because... And that's okay. Why would I want to play a game where I couldn't shoot fools? And I, I think I have the opposite. I will I will love and go watch the playthroughs of the the shooters and the, the big epic ones and that but for me it's it's not that I don't love playing them. Um, it's time. Mm-hmm. I'm running out of I'm running out of time with, with things that I have to do. I need to be mindful of the choices that I'm making. So I can go and I can go online, I can either watch cutscenes or I can watch um, playthrough of pieces that I'm interested in for it and then some on on occasion it's led to actually I would really like to play that and turn mm-hmm. around and make mm-hmm. the investment for it mm-hmm. both time and money um, it's also any of the RPG games that we play the alternate endings and stuff mm-hmm. like I know I'm not going to have time to play through this a second time right or I really didn't want to romance that character but I'm still curious to see what would have been the result if I'd gone that route instead mm-hmm. so it's become for me it's it's become just a way of tapping in, keeping up to speed, because I'm still interested in these things. I just don't have the time that I'd like to devote back to playing that I, I used to. Mm-hmm. That was that was one of actually the things that got me, for example, into StarCraft. I spent years watching uh, Day Nine, uh, Sean Plot, uh, do a live stream on, and and he didn't even really play games. People would send him. He was because he was a pro StarCraft player. He and his brother are both StarCraft pros. 
and he people would send him their replays and he would critique them and he would offer tips both like both amateur people pro people he would set up challenges every monday fun day monday was a huge thing where like you know win games on on the ranked ladder using you know two carriers like here's your here's your restriction now get creative mm-hmm. and find ways to win or find ways to lose that are interesting mm-hmm. and Watching a ton of that got me thinking about StarCraft, and, and as a result, I am much better at it than I used to be, because I understand some of those elemental principles, and I feel more comfortable playing it both online and, you know, in single player. And now, instead, I watch his streams for mostly walking, where they play adventure games. Mm-hmm. I'm super. I really wish I liked adventure games. I have all four of the Blackwell games, and. They're so good, but I just do not have the patience to rub everything I own on every object I can find. Everything. (laughs) I just don't, and I wish I did. Like, even the games they're playing, like the new King's Quest, which, by the way, if you haven't played it or seen it, Check it out. I'll put the, I'll put a link to their playthrough in the, It's really short. It's like you know a couple hours because it's only the first chapter. The narrator is Christopher Lloyd. The main character and narrator is Christopher Effing Lloyd. It is brilliant and funny and fun and yeah, but I but I wouldn't play it because it's not my jam. But I love watching them play it and listening to them talk about it. Mm-hmm. Well, it's it's sharing in somebody's passion. Yeah, well, and especially because I mean they've got, I think it's all three of them have MFAs and video games and and that kind of field. So it's also listening to experts talk about the thing that they are experts at and the thing that they that matters most to them. Which is it's interesting because it, maybe even ten years ago, um, somebody else often ask, or even now they'll say, Did, "Have you played this game?" And you'll come back and you might say, no, but I've watched it online or I've watched people play it. And today that's like, oh, okay, cool. Maybe who did you watch or did you see this mm-hmm. this episode of it? I mean, I remember 10 years ago, it used to be a thing where my p- partner at the time would sit down and play and I would pull up a chair and a cup of tea and I would watch him play through the game. So I wasn't playing it, but I was still watching the game and watching it be played. This mm-hmm. is you know, back before YouTube was even a thing, if there was such a time. <laughs> and, but back then, if, if you said, no, I didn't play it, but I watched it played, you'd be, oh, well, you're just, you know, you're not really a gamer. You didn't do this. You, d- you didn't actually play it. It doesn't count. And today it's, it's perfectly acceptable to say, I'm a member of the culture. I'm part of the culture, but I didn't play it. I just watched it. Yeah. And it's, it's sort of gaining that, that, bit of respect for it so i'm really grateful to everybody that takes the time to share that passion to put it out there to say i'm, I'm going to do a playthrough with this you know i it's sharing that enjoyment sharing that passion with it for the rest of us for whatever reason can't can't join in and, and play it ourselves i mean i did i've been doing live or let's plays for five years now we did live we did live D for three years uh, including to the point where one of our fans became one of our players when we had an opening. And yeah, it's it's super fun to do. And I don't do nearly enough of it. Huck, you've been watching Markiplier. Yeah, and I didn't have it nearly as bad as you, but uh, I would always get weird looks when I would be hanging out with Doug. This is before Doug and I moved in. And I would... Mm-hmm. I would you know, walk down to his place to do my laundry because I didn't want to spend money in the laundry mat. So I would go to his place to do laundry. And it's like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm doing laundry and watching Doug play games. Oh, you're playing games? No, no, I'm just like he's playing Fable Three, and I'm just watching him. Yeah. And then, and I, I never really had the burning desire to want to join him. I, I had an intrinsic enjoyment of just watching him play through Fable. Yeah, because you're just there to hang out. Yeah. So yeah, I didn't have the nearly the kind of weird shade being thrown at me for it but um yeah there's it's like watching people 
play through it can be interesting. That's how I got uh, interested in StarCraft, um, StarCraft 2, because I had no hope in the world of my computer ever being powerful enough at the time to play it. Mm -hmm. And now, if I were to upgrade a computer, I probably could, but I don't really have a huge interest because I spent so much time just watching it, and I feel like I got my, my fill of it. Um, but I also enjoy watching streaming we, of stuff. We really need to help games. you out on that. I think I have a thing that can help you. We'll talk after the podcast. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm starting to enjoy non-gaming streams of things. Uh, I follow a couple artists on Instagram who will jump onto Twitch and they'll stream um, them drawing or inking a, a comic book page. Um, her name escapes me, but we'll throw it in the show notes. Um I think she's from Toronto, but she's I'm almost positive she's Canadian, uh, where she does full-body comic book painting. So she'll paint herself in any number of characters. you know. And it's the creepy thing of, like, she'll be sitting there as the Silver Surfer, and she'll, of course, paint it with her eyes closed, and then she'll open up her eyes. It's like, ugh. <laughs> what the crap? Where she'll, like, turn sideways, and you can see, like, how she had painted her chest so that it looked like a male's torso and she completely was able to to mask any of her curves in three-dimensional space and it's just like wow that is stupidly talented mm -hmm. and uh so yeah I, her name unfortunately escapes me but we'll, we'll put in the show notes we'll throw the link in the show notes um, yeah i've been i've been trying to catch um ash from mega cynics because uh, i very much enjoy her comic and she does drawing streams mm -hmm. and she's been pushing herself to do more and more of them but uh, and I've been trying to catch more of them, but my internet is fickle, <laughs> especially for live. I watch like I watch a lot of it on YouTube, where I can you know I can pause it whenever I want without missing something, and I will like I will watch a four hour stream while I write or edit videos or play games. I, I'm finding that myself. I work at a computer all day, and there are days where I have mind-numbing work it's copy paste it's it's batch editing things like that that don't require full attention mm -hmm. i have a second monitor set up and i'll put on some stream of something it often i can't do game streaming at work because then that my sh total focus yeah. will shift completely but it might be um i've been finding something that's got a bit of audio to it i'll do um a minecraft one because that's there's not so much gameplay as people building something in the game. I know some people or, who play Minecraft on the internet. Yeah, just a few, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and or um, cookie decorating is actually the one that I really like watching. Nice. It's just nice. It's ridiculous because it's a thing. It's like you said, this is a thing I will never do, but is fascinating to sort of watch and and especially things like that. I can catch it at the corner of my eye uh, and and pay attention. Or the other one that I've been watching. Um, in almost like a sports capacity is people playing Magic the Gathering. Oh, yeah. And, and watching that. And I've become a better Magic player um, in watching mm -hmm. that stream. And it is. I find it interesting because I've always been... Um, I'm a baseball fan as well. And a lot of the friends that I hang out have no interest in sport, uh, spectator sport at all. And that's fine. Right, and but there's always sort of that nerdy joke of go sports go, and I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, but you guys will watch, and girls, you you'll watch, you know, people play something online, a different game is no different than me wanting to watch the baseball yeah. game. It's it's the right? same idea. Yeah. yeah, and it's actually just recently, uh, when this was recorded, a new esports bar opened up in Toronto, where they are exclusively instead of streaming, play um, player sports. And, and the the major sporty mm -hmm. sports, they're playing esports and other video game streaming and things like that for it, which I think is is fascinating in a in a social structure. I often for esports, I often like I don't watch pro Magic the Gathering. I will go to something like um, Channel Fireball mm -hmm. and watch like you know MTGO Magic the Gathering online because they're like some days. I am I'm not a great magic player. I'm an all right magic player, but it is really fun to watch like Luis Scott Vargas draft something from Cube and just ruin motherfuckers' day. <laughs> like the man, the things that man does with cards are awful, and I love them. <laughs> but 
uh, pro StarCraft. I was like, I, I don't like the commentary for Magic. I don't know why, but it's just I can't follow it. But pro StarCraft, oh man, I got super into that. I just started watching a lot of pro Mortal Kombat. It turned up in my awesome. my esports league, my ESL feed, and. Again, I'm an average Mortal Kombat player, but it's like baseball. You're watching people demonstrate mastery. Mm -hmm. And the fast-paced matches that I'm seeing, uh, along with the commentary, are really interesting. I'm like, oh, this is what the game looks like when you're good at it. Because normally, if you're playing, especially a fighting game, with somebody who's really good at it, you're too busy getting your ass kicked to notice how cool it is. (laughs) Yeah. Or you're getting frustrated because you're that person who's always getting their ass kicked in a fighting game. <laughs> Which is me. I just saw... <clears throat> I went and saw Captain America yesterday. And in the... in the, I don't know if it was a trailer before the, the movie. Or if it was just one of those trailers that they play before they start the trailers. Uh, but they advertised the um, um, Street Fighter tournament. That apparently Cinepex Odeon runs. I, I like, saw that too. Oh, wow. And they're saying like become a, a big screen hero yeah. kind of deal. And there's like a $25,000 pot for mm-hmm. whatever they're advertising. Yeah. So you're seeing a lot more of that popping up in like yep. the real world as opposed to, you know, just... That terrifies form. me, but... <laughs> I, I, every once in a while I get that... I, I, I still get that feeling of like we're secret nerds and this is ours. Uh, which is a stupid feeling to have. Um, because no, this is ours and we want to share it with everyone. Mm -hmm. That's why we stream stuff. That's why we make videos. That's why, you know, we blog about games and et cetera, et cetera, is because we really like them and we want to share them because games are awesome. Play more games. Mm. That is it. That is the moral of the story. I was going to say, that sounds like a good place to end it off. Games are awesome. Play Play more more games. games. (laughs) Uh, Take a page from Will Wheaton on that one. (laughs) You magnificent bastard. Uh, No, I am Jim. I'm Ryan. It's Gina. We're signing off. Keep on gaming. (laughs) I didn't really have the ring. Stay awesome! I have, like, all the high fives from, like, season two and three. You should do it. We've been talking about the highlight reel, but so much work, so much time. Yeah, when we don't want to put out an episode, we'll just do a clip show. That's Yeah, sure, but who's going to fucking dig up the footage and edit it?